Hello friends, in this lecture we will continue with our discussion on sampling. We were looking at the ideal sampling also called instantaneous or impulse strain sampling. In this lecture we will learn how to obtain the spectrum or the Fourier transform of a periodic impulse train. We have seen that in a digital communication system, if the message signal happens to be in the analog form, it must first be converted to a digital form and this analog to digital conversion is achieved by the process of sampling followed by quantization. Sampling is essentially the process of converting a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal. It can be done through various ways. We were looking at the ideal way of doing it, which is the impulse strain sampling. Let us recall what we do in impulse strain sampling. In it, we multiply the message signal with an impulse strain which can be pictorially depicted as a sequence of impulses each occurring at instances which are integer multiple of some ts which is called the sampling interval or and also the period of the periodic impulse strain the strength of each impulse is 1 when such impulse strain multiplies the message signal what results is the sampled version of the original analog signal. So we get a sampled signal. At this point we had raised an important question that by discretizing the signal in time are we not losing information? It's a question of fundamental importance and to get the answer to this question, we need to look at the spectrum of the sampled signal. And for that, we first need to look at the spectrum of the impulse train. Let us do that. We will first obtain the Fourier series representation of the impulse train. And then from there, we will obtain the Fourier transform representation. So, given impulse strain delta Ts of T, which we have denoted as summation over n from minus infinity to plus infinity, delta T minus n Ts, clearly it is periodic with period Ts. So, we can write it as a Fourier series summation sum k going from minus infinity to plus infinity ck which are called the Fourier series coefficients into e to the power j 2 pi k fs into t where fs is the sampling frequency equal to 1 by ts. Now the Fourier series coefficient ck can be obtained by 1 over t integration over the inter I should write 1 over ts integration over the interval of ts of the function for which we are uh, obtaining the coefficients. So, delta sub Ts of T into e to the power minus j 2 pi k f s t dt. Now, this interval Ts could be any interval in general maybe from 0 to t or 
minus T s by 2 T s by 2 any interval of T s duration. Now in our example here the impulses occur at 0 T s, 2 T s, minus T s and so on. So it is imperative to take an interval of T which contains an impulse but in which the impulses don't occur at the boundary of the integration, okay, the limit of the integration. So a wise decision would be to take the interval from minus T s by 2 to T s by 2. Now when we do that, in this interval, we just have one impulse and which is nothing but delta t. Okay. So, this expression can then be written as 1 by t s integration minus t s by 2 to t s by 2 and now we just have one impulse there which is denoted by delta t into e to the power j 2 pi k f s t dt. Now here we invoke a very important property of impulse function which says that if we have a function x of t, if we multiply this function with delta t and integrate it over an interval which contains this impulse function, so this interval may be from minus infinity to plus infinity or it may be from some very small epsilon minus epsilon to plus epsilon xt delta t dt the result is equal to x of 0 that is this process gives the value of the signal at the instant where the impulse occurs this very important property of impulse function which we are familiar with is called the sampling or sifting property. When we use this property here, note that this is the signal x of t if we compare it with this expression. Accordingly, this integral evaluates to x of 0. And what is x of 0 here? Replace this t by 0. So it is e to the power 0, which is 1. So 1 by t s into 1, which is equal to 1 by t s. So the Fourier series coefficients for the impulse strain is 1 by t s, or which is equal to f s. Thus, we can write this delta t s of t as a Fourier series summation over all k in place of ck we can write 1 by t s or f s into e to the power j 2 pi k f s into t. So this is the Fourier series representation of the impulse strain. Now from here we can obtain the Fourier transform representation of the same and how to do that let us see. So just recall, we'll just use some properties of Fourier transform to arrive at the spectrum of the impulse strain. Just recall that if we have a constant 1, then its Fourier transform is given by delta f, an impulse in frequency domain. Now if this 1 is multiplied by e to the power j 2 pi f s t so e to the power j 2 pi f s t into 1 then we use the frequency frequency shifting property to get the Fourier transform as delta f minus f s if there is a coefficient k also here e to the power j 2 pi k f s t we will be getting delta f minus k f s. Now, if we apply the summation here, k from minus infinity to infinity, 
e to the power j 2 pi k f s t then we get a summation here as well due to the additivity property of Fourier transform and we get here summation over k from minus infinity to infinity delta f minus k f s and if you multiply the summation by 1 by t s or f s 1 by t s summation over all k from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power j 2 pi k f s t we get here the multiplication by the same coefficient because of the homogeneity property of Fourier transform. We know that Fourier transform is linear, so it is additive as well as homogeneous. And therefore, we get here 1 by Ts summation k from minus infinity to infinity delta f minus k fs. And this is the Fourier transform of this signal here which is nothing but the Fourier series representation of our impulse train. So this is the Fourier series of our impulse train and the Fourier transform we have obtained as this. Of course this 1 by Ts is same as Fs so we can write anything 1 by Ts or Fs. So Fourier transform of the impulse train. It can be sketched as follows. So we can sketch it like this. So delta f minus k f s is again an impulse train each with strength 1 by t s or f s and separated by f s interval on frequency axis. So you can just sketch it like this. So 0 f s minus f s. Similarly, we will have impulses at 2 f s minus 2 f s and so on. And the strength of each impulse is 1 by t s or just f s. This result is an important result which tells us that the Fourier transform of an impulse train is another impulse train. We will use this result in obtaining the spectrum of our sampled signal and from there we will derive what is called the sampling theorem, one of the most fundamental results in digital communication and digital signal processing. That's all for this lecture. Thank you.